Yo, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Mood616 here, and thank you once again for stopping in. Alrighty, guys, so yes, this is Best of the Blind Buys Volume 3. I know it's been months since I've done one of these. I did not forget about this series. Uh, yeah, I just. There's really no reason for it. Um, I actually honestly kind of forgot about the series because just got so many other projects on the go and stuff, but. Um, but I have remembered, and now it, I'm back with a brand new video, so. And I got five more videos here that I think are pretty awesome blind buys, you know, just things that I've seen around, not really heard a lot of people talk about before I picked them up and stuff, and obviously you've never seen the movies, purchased them, and really enjoyed them. All right, first up for the best of the blind buys, I've got art cards flying around here, is a film from... 2000 and I think no this is from the early part of 2013 that's right I'm thinking okay so released by Slasher Studios uh, and it's called Don't Go to the Reunion um, yeah I, I remember seeing Facebook posts and stuff on this one and I really enjoyed the the uh, the art to this you know it, it so looks like a throwback film you know to the 80s and stuff that's just very vintage kind of 80s cover art love that um, so I knew right away, being a slash film, that I had to check this out. Um, I had actually read before I bought it a couple um, not so overwhelming reviews on it. So, but you know, at the same time, I'm like, whatever, I'm gonna pick this up anyway. So I did pop it in and watched it. Um, so it's basically about uh, it's got you know kind of a very kind of you know done storyline before, but it is a homage to the '80s. So um, basically, it centers around this guy. Um, that uh, gets a trick played on him basically by the cool kids in school. Uh, girl asks him out on a date. Doesn't go very well for him. Um, and shit like that. So he feels all ridiculed and whatnot. And uh, yeah, so it basically jumps for 10 years in the storyline. And all the cool kids now, they are getting um, basically invitations to like their high school, 10 year, or 10 year high school reunion at this, uh, at a house though, <laughs> it's kind of weird, um, and then of course they start getting picked off one by one in this place, the, the storyline is very reminiscent of, uh, Slaughter High, um, the interesting thing about this film is that it has like a 90s twist to it, uh, it's a very short film, I think it runs just around 70 minutes or something like that, I can't remember exactly the running time, but I really enjoyed it, I liked, I, I liked all the references to the 80s films. They even mentioned Killer Party in this film, which was fantastic. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I thought I thought the way they did the the ending to this film was actually pretty cool. I, it was very enjoyable. Uh, for a low-budget film, man, I, I really highly recommend this. It was, it was a lot better than I was expecting it to be. Um, but then again, I am kind of biased when it comes to 80s type throwback slashers or 80s slashers in general. I try to give them, benef them the benefit of the doubt because I'm such a big slasher fan. But, you know, honestly, this one just kind of works all around. It's got great cover arts. Uh, it's a very simplistic storyline, but it's fun. It's a great film. I do highly recommend this. So if you can still find copies of this, definitely pick this up. Uh, it's definitely worth the time. Um, yeah, I know. I, I bought it straight from the director, I believe, so it was, you know, 20 bucks kind of thing, but a little more than I'd like to pay, but then again, it is an independent film, and I do like to support indie directors, so, you know, if you can buy stuff straight from the directors, do it. I really like to support them so they can make more films. But yeah, don't go to the reunion. Awesome film. Uh, next up is a film released by Troma. Um... Yeah, and it goes by the title of Doomsday County. Now, this is just a really, really fucking fun movie. Um, just distributed by Troma. came out in 2012. It's got a really complex story and plot to this, surprisingly enough. I don't really want to get into the whole thing, but it's basically about a zombie outbreak that's caused by a mad scientist who's trying to take over Doomsday County, which is actually the name of the county, Doomsday County. Uh, the thing about this mad scientist, he's ex-military, and he's obviously crazy, but he's like a melting man. He's melting. And he's getting help from these aliens, and there's zombies and vampires. This is a really, really fucking fun movie. Um, if you want to know my full thoughts on this one, there is a, there'll be a review up on Body Bags, depending on when I post this video. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is a really, really fucking fun film. Uh, I had just such a blast with it. It's got great effects. For a low-budget film, it's done really well. Like, even the acting's actually pretty good in this. 
but uh, I was blown away by the by the storyline because it just seems to get it's just almost like it's overwritten you know there's so much plot and story but with that said this movie never stops right from the opening scene with these uh, Xena lights um, that caused the outbreak the zombie outbreak this light breaks and then you know infects all these people and shit uh, right from that opening moment right to the end it's just non-stop the interesting another interesting point about this film is that it's directed by four different directors it's not an anthology film but it is um, it's kind of done in different segments like it's got you know the segment with um, you know the zombie outbreak and then it's got the the police investigation with the detectives and then it's got the segment where this girl by the name of um, Betty Beretta is called in by the military and she's like a specialist or whatever to go and you know stop the scientist and then there's the scientist part so I'm assuming that's the way it was done with all these directors they all wrote the film too so um, you know but you know I know like I said in my even in my review uh, a lot of people get scared scared off by you know by trauma releases and stuff they all think they're gonna be real garbage and stuff but I will admit you know I'm everybody knows I'm a huge trauma fan I collect trauma movies but there is a lot of really bad ones but there's a lot of really good ones this is one of them. I highly recommend this one. Doomsday County. Definitely check it out. Give it a chance. It's a really fucking fun movie. It's just... It, it really did surprise the shit out of me. I could not believe how well done it was. Uh, next up is another film from 2013. And this film is from... I believe it's from Ireland. I do know this. <laughs> yeah, it says UK Ireland, so I think it's actually from the island. Um... And it's a creature feature film called Grabbers. And I've talked about this one before, but in podcasts and stuff. But uh, this was another really huge surprise. I'd seen people show this movie off, so I had to check it out. It just looked very interesting. I love the premise with these kind of like these alien type things with huge tentacles that are decapitating people and drinking their blood and stuff. Um, you know, and of course these people are stranded on this island. It's, it's about these, uh, I guess, kind of like the police or whatever they they you know, police the island and stuff, or take care of the island, and now they got to deal with this issue, because these grabbers, what they call them, are starting to take out the people that live there and shit, uh, it's a really fucking fun movie, really, really had a fun time with this, and the fact that, you know, what it comes down to is that, uh, you know, being from Ireland, and you know, the whole cliche thing about everybody from Ireland's a fucking alcoholic, and all they do is drink, they use that in this movie to their benefit, which is actually quite funny because they soon discover in the film that um, that these grabbers are allergic to alcohol. So their defense mechanism is to get real shit faced and fight off these things because they can't fucking they they won't drink the human's blood if it's infected with this poisonous alcohol. I think the the premise of this film is just fucking brilliant. Absolutely, so much fun. I I couldn't recommend this movie enough. It just it's one of those ones I just puts a smile on my face when I pop it in, and I knew right away, you know, 20 minutes in this film I was going to love it, and I had just a great ride all the way through. Check out Grabbers, awesome film. Uh, next up is an older film released by Code Red uh, from 1975, and it's called The Love Butcher. Now, when Code Red puts out stuff, I try to, like, newer releases, not newer releases, but when they put out a new release... I try to pick them up as soon as I can because, you know, how, how Code Red works. You know, if you don't get it right away, it's usually out of print. It goes for stupid money. Um, so I picked this one up, uh, and I was kind of intrigued by it because I didn't really know a lot about this movie, and I wasn't sure exactly what it was even about uh, until I, I popped it in and stuff. And basically what it's about is this guy right here, he's uh, he's like a groundskeeper for, you know, this upper-class neighborhood. He basically does all the grounds for a bunch of the houses in this neighborhood and stuff. And everybody knows who he is, but he's he's kind of handicapped. Like, he walks with a limp. He's got a fucked up arm and, or a fucked up hand and shit like that. But and he's kind of socially awkward and stuff. And the thing is, um, soon there's a bunch of women that start getting violated and murdered in this neighborhood and stuff. And the police are baffled. They have no leads. They don't understand who's doing this shit. They can't figure it out. But nobody seems to notice that these women that are being killed and, and stuff like that all have one thing in common. They all have the same groundskeeper. But no one suspects this guy because he's, you know, what you see, as you see him every day, he's kind of all fucked up and shit. The thing is, this guy's got multiple personalities. And he actually plays about five or six different characters in this film. He plays, you know, the gimpy guy. Then he plays like this Mexican character. He plays like this playboy character, this Mongol. It's insane. I think the acting in this movie just fucking blew me away, man. This guy did a really good job. 
uh, I can't exactly remember what his name is, Eric Stern. He did a great, great job in this movie. And basically what it is is, you know, they don't recognize him. Like, he knocks on the door and he's selling something or whatever, and he, and he gets into their house and he does his business and shit like that. But he's, like, in a battle with himself, too, like, mentally. Like, you know, the, the groundskeeper guy's, like, the nice guy, and he's trying to fight off, you know, his other personalities and shit during the film. And so it's just a really fucking good movie. I had a lot of fun with this. It really took me by surprise. I mean, Code Red releases can be a little hit and miss, too, with their with the quality of their films, but... Um, this was a lot of fucking fun. Great, great acting for a low-budget film. Uh, yeah, highly recommend this one from 1975. Definitely check this out. And last up for this video, I think I, I think I said in the first video that I was just going to do about five per video. So, you know, keep the video short. Uh, this is another film from 2013 that, um, you know, once again, Fangoria-type films can, can be very hit and miss especially in this line. Uh, this is from the brand new Fangoria Presents line, and this was volume number four, and this movie's called Germ Z, or Germs, or Germ Z. Um, yeah, so they've released five movies in this Fangoria Presents. I think um, the only one that I didn't really like was Axe. I thought Axe was actually pretty fucking shitty. And Human Resources was a really good one. Uh, the Entity was not bad. Um, you know, Germ Z, and I have yet to see Sin Reaper, which I actually have coming in the mail right now, but but anyways, this is one of those films where a meteor kind of crashes in a small county and basically kind of gives off this, um, I guess what you want to call it, it's like a, some kind of germ comes into Earth with this with this asteroid or whatever, this meteorite, and it starts infecting people, making them like real fucking aggressive cannibals and stuff, almost like zombies, but I don't really think they even say the word zombie in this film. I think it's more like an infection film. And um, so... Basically, you follow this this police officer and stuff, and he's you know got to stop this shit and stuff because it's just getting out of fucking control. And uh, that's you know it's a very simple premise, but it's a, it's executed really well, and uh, you know good acting, good gore, um, just all around. It was a really fun film, some fun characters. Uh, actually, it was pretty gory. Actually, to be quite surprised, I was quite surprised. Um, actually, it says on the bottom, "Wake up, avoid virus, kill zombies," but. They maybe they do mention maybe they do say zombies in the film, but it seems like it's one of those infection films, you know. Uh, but uh, you know, not a whole lot to say about this one. It's one of these infection zombie films that uh, is actually just really well done for a low budget one. I highly recommend this one. I think it's one of the best films in the uh, Fangori presents. You know, it's right up there within Human Resources for sure. It's the, my favorite one so far. So, um, but yeah, I couldn't say enough good things about this one. You can get this movie for super cheap. Definitely check it out, man. Uh, really fun, you know, I know these storylines have been done to death with these infection type, you know, small county fucking zombie virus films, but, you know, every once in a while you get one that's actually really worth checking out, and this is definitely one of them, so, but yeah, check out Germ Z from 2013, so I'll round that up, once again, that was Germ Z, highly recommended, The Love Butcher, definitely check this out, I know Code Red prices are a little crazy, but I think this one is still on the site, and you can, it's still available, so, um, but yeah, you know, if you don't want to pay the 20 bucks, you know, I, I can see why you don't want to, it's a little expensive, but, uh, it is worth the watch, and, and, you know, to own, but the 20 bucks, eh, I know, uh, Grabbers, awesome film from the UK, uh, more specifically Ireland, um, awesome stuff, I could not recommend that enough, Doomsday County, don't be scared. It's a trauma release, but it's fucking fun as hell. It's got so much action in this movie. It's great. Um, like I said, you know, zombies, vampires, aliens, melting mad scientists, great soundtrack, awesome atmosphere, fucking beautiful, beautiful lead character. She's awesome. Check it out. And last but not least, uh, don't go to the reunion once again. Uh, 2013 throwback 80 slash with a 90s twist. Check this one out awesome stuff, and yeah, I'll hopefully I'll be back with another video soon, you know, um, I actually had to put back a couple films that I was going to do for this one, so I could probably do another one of these soon, and uh, yeah, that's what we'll do, so guys, uh, I'll see you guys then, peace out.